Hello everyone. Welcome back to Must Electronics. Today let's try something different. Are you feeling bored? Then let's play a game. But instead of just playing, we will actually build our own Flappy Bird game. Sounds interesting? Let's get started. Here are the components we will be using. A PCB board to integrate all the components. Multi stand wires for connections. Screws and nuts to assemble the case. Bug strips to mount the chips. An OLED display to show the game. A push button to control the bird. A slider switch to power on or off the circuit. Arduino Nano, the brain of our project. A 5 volt regulator for powering the Nano. Four 1.5 volt primary cells for power. A battery holder. Back case. Front case with Flappy Bird game design. Here's our circuit diagram. Let's start building step by step. Take the PCB board. A hole at the center is made to fit the push button. Solder the bug strips to hold the OLED display, Arduino Nano and regulator. Connect the OLED display pins, first pin to ground of Arduino Nano, second pin to 3.3 volt, third pin to D8, fourth pin to D10, fifth pin to D9. 6th pin to D7, 7th pin to D5. Connect regulator V out to V in of Arduino Nano and ground to ground. For power switch, slider switch terminal 2 to V in of regulator. Terminal 1 to red wire of battery holder black wire of battery holder to ground of regulator push button wiring one side of push button to D2 of Arduino Nano other side of push button to ground of Arduino Nano finally place the cells in the holder and fix it inside the back case attach the front case with screws the hardware setup is ready now we just need to flash the code The complete code is uploaded on GitHub. The link is in the description below. Download and unzip the file. Inside you will find both the circuit diagram and Arduino code. Open the .ino file in Arduino IDE. If you don't have it, you can download Arduino IDE from the official Arduino website. First we include the required libraries, SPI, Wire, Adafruit GFX and Adafruit SH110X which handle communication with OLED display and graphics rendering. Then we define the OLED pins and initialize the display to SPI mode setting it to 128-64 pixels. Next we define variables for our game. Bird Y, Velocity, Gravity and Jump handle the bird's vertical movement. Arrays Pipe X, Gap Y, ARR and Pipe DIR control the pipe's position and their up-down motion. We also have variables for score, level, speed, bonus coins and game states like game over and game started. In the setup function, we configure the button pin, initialize the display and randomly place the pipes. The random seed ensures that each game has different pipe positions. Our loop function controls the game flow. If the game hasn't started, we display the start screen and wait for the button press. If the game is active, we call update game to handle physics and collisions, then draw game to display everything. If the game is over, we show the game over screen and wait for the button press to restart. 
The draw bird function renders the bird with body, beak, eye and animated wings. The wing position alternates every 100 milliseconds to give a flapping effect. In update game, we handle bird movement, pipe scrolling, coin spawning and collision detection. Pipes move from right to left and reset once off screen. Gap positions slightly move up and down for extra challenge. Coins appear randomly and collecting them adds bonus points. We also increase speed and difficulty as the score goes up. The draw game function handles the display output. It clears the screen, draw the bird, pipes and coins. Then shows the current score and level on the top right. Finally, we have draw start screen and draw game over to display instructions and final scores along with reset game to bring all variables back to their initial state for a fresh start. Now let's flash the code. Before flashing, select board as Arduino Nano and choose the correct port. It's done. Let's move on to the demo. When powered on, the OLED shows Flappy Bird press button to start. Let's play. Oops, I lost at score 1. Let's try again. Okay, now the score is 9. See, building DIY games is not only fun but also a great learning experience. That's all for now. If you found this project interesting, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to Master Electronics for more DIY projects. Got any questions or suggestions? Drop them in the comments. We would love to hear from you.